Here's a 19 inch Sylvania color TV from 1982 using the E32 series chassis. You may recall that I made a video of this set a while back where I demonstrated how to use a 100 watt incandescent light bulb to substitute for the B plus fuse for troubleshooting purposes and I also demonstrated some other other testing procedures in order to determine that this TV had a bad flyback transformer. Well unfortunately a new flyback transformer has not been available in years and I didn't have anything in my junk box that would work so I had to put this TV off to the side until a suitable part could be found. Well that moment came this morning when the UPS truck pulled up in front of my house a gentleman in Georgia who owns a TV repair shop and who also enjoys collecting and repairing vintage electronics just like I do. Uh, he happened to be at the recycling center a week or two ago and someone had dropped off an old Sylvania TV similar to mine and, and he remembered that I needed a flyback for one of these sets and fortunately they let him take the TV so he brought the set back to his shop and someone had ripped the power cord out of it but he attached another power cord and it was determined that the TV actually worked so instead of that set getting crushed and sent to China to aid in the manufacture of some throwaway garbage it's going to uh, it's going to help keep another TV alive I think he kept the CRT and the knobs and the tuners and maybe a few more parts for possible future use and he sent me this whole chassis which should help greatly in getting my set going so Danny if you're watching this video thank you very much for sending this to me it's greatly appreciated I could take the easy way out and just swap the whole chassis out but that's not very satisfying to me it's a lot more satisfying to repair the old chassis so that's what we're going to do here this particular chassis was manufactured in January of 1981 and at that time Sylvania was still owned by GTE I think it was sometime in mid 81 when they when they sold out to North American Phillips my TV was made in I believe February of 82 so it would have fell into the North American Phillips era. This E32 chassis and the E34 chassis that's similar that was used in console models was in production for quite a number of years. I think 1980 was the first year and 84 I think was the last. So without further delay let's get started on this and see if we can get this TV going. So what we'll do is remove the screws holding the back on this TV. Yeah, I actually put this TV back together when I determined that we couldn't fix it right away, so I must be getting better. My usual routine is to just leave stuff torn apart until I can get to it again. So I will remove all of the screws in the from the back cover and then remove the back gain access to the chassis. Okay, the back cover has been removed, exposing the chassis, and I have one correction to make. I think I said this set was made in February of 82. It was actually made in January of 82, but still this was made after North American Phillips acquired the Sylvania and Philco names from GTE for a few years. North American Phillips continued to use Sylvania GTE design chassis, but by the mid-1980s, I think they had abandoned all of the older GTE designs and went with their own chassis designs. Okay, I had previously unsoldered the old flyback the last time we had this part, so all I have to do is unscrew the mounting screws and and then we should be able to extract the old flyback from the circuit board. 
And the way we unsolder these is obviously we need a good soldering iron. And we use a device such as this. Let me get it here. Here, this is called a desoldering pump or solder sucker. It's just a little spring loaded vacuum pump that you put over whatever molten solder that you want to suck up. And then just push the button and it pulls the solder off. Another thing we use is a product called desoldering braid. It's simply just a copper braid that soaks the molten solder up into the braid. And sometimes it's time consuming to get these old flyback transformers and loose because of the amount of solder involved, but okay, hang on a minute. Okay, so here's the old flyback transformer removed from the television set. I will turn my soldering iron on and let it get good and hot, and then we will unsolder the new flyback transformer from the donor chassis and install it in here and see what happens. Okay, I'm now ready to remove the flyback transformer from the donor chassis. And the way I usually like to do this is go around the first time and remove as much solder as I can with the with the vacuum pump. And then once I've done that, I'll go around with the desoldering braid and remove any remaining solder. I use Chemtronics brand desoldering braid. It's available from most any decent electronic supply house. I don't like the Radio Shack braid. That stuff's not worth bringing home, so just take my word for it and buy the good stuff. Okay, we have everything unsoldered, and we only needed the vacuum pump to do it, so we will loosen these screws and see if the flyback is ready to just fall on off the board. And here's the flyback removed from the circuit board, all ready to be installed in this television. Okay, just to show you how a good flyback test, I have the donor flyback connected to our Syncor analyzer, and we're set to the flyback ringing test. And on the old flyback, we checked very bad, but as you can see, this is a totally different story. And the highest position on the selector switch setting is the reading you go by. So as far as I'm concerned, this flyback is indeed good. Of course, I had no doubt about it being good. The gentleman that gave it to me said it was good, but I just wanted to connect it to my Syncor analyst just to show everybody how a good one test. Okay, we have our replacement flyback physically bolted to the chassis. All that's left to do now is to re-solder each one of these pins here and then connect the high voltage anode lead to the picture tube and then there's a lead here where are you? Right here that solders on to the focus control and then here's our focus lead from the CRT socket that goes here. I'll go ahead and plug that up. Okay. Okay, the flyback transformer is soldered to the chassis and we're just about ready to run the smoke test. Now once again I'm going to use the standard 100 watt incandescent light bulb in place of the B plus fuse and see what happens. So I will set up that right now. Okay, the flyback is now soldered in place. We have our incandescent light bulb connected in place with the B plus fuse. And our TV is plugged into the Variac, which I already have set at around 100 volts. That's a good starting point. So let's turn it on and see what happens. Okay, we now have audio. 
And our light bulb is glowing, but not as bright as it was the first time. Look around on the screen and see if our screen's lit up. Okay, our screen is not lit up. Okay, we have our meter connected and we're reading 58 volts with our light bulb in place, so let's do this. Let's pull the light bulb out and put our fuse back in place and see what happens. I'm satisfied that nothing's going to blow up here. The B plus voltage is supposed to be 112 volts, so 58 is a little low. But that's to be expected with the light bulb that I have in place. Okay, we've replaced the incandescent bulb with the 2 amp light, 2 amp B plus fuse that's supposed to be here. And we have our voltmeter connected. And it would help if I plug the TV in. Sometimes I just don't know about myself, and the B plus is running 112 volts, which is right where it should be, and we have about 119 volts input, and our screen is lighting up nicely. So I tell you what, let's go dig up a converter box and put a signal to this thing and see what it does. What we've done will be in sunny Mexico. Okay, here we are connected to the DTV converter. Oh, wait, that's the end of a different place. Back in the old days, I could have just flipped it to channel 11 and picked up something off of the antenna terminals, but not that way anymore. And it doesn't look too bad. Emma was doing it. Considering I haven't touched a thing, I need to adjust the Please. vertical size control a tad bit, but the picture's not bad at all on this set. Up and try our new chocolate mint holiday shake. There's some rain. Okay, and we have run. There's sky. You're looking at light wind. Seattle, Portland, Interstate 5. Good shape, Pacific Coast. That's cool to enjoy the weather. The my Grenada. My education was paid for out of my aunt's small pension. Do, do I need to say more? Plus internship and residency. I don't know how anybody does it these days. There's our picture hey, control. Exam. What does that entail exactly? Our checklist covers 23 points. takes roughly 30 minutes. Sharpness. Were there any interruptions with Mrs. Glazer? She was on her phone much of the time. Who was she talking to? Brightness. Well, you've been uh, absolutely helpful. Our color control all the way down. All the way up. So Grenada Medical School? I really got you going, didn't I? No, Gerald. Tent control. I'm sure it was more about the low admittance qualifications than Anthony's pension. Right, no kids. He lives alone in Jamaica. I have to say, for a basic color TV from the early 80s, it doesn't look bad at all. In fact, it looks better than a lot of later model 19-inch CRT televisions. So you and Hildy... A good time. This is the juniper. Oh, the output of this converter box is a little grainy. It seems to be that way on every TV I connect it to. But I'm going to let this thing run and make sure it's fixed and do a few little minor adjustments on it. But as far as I'm concerned, this TV is fixed. A big thank you going out to Danny for locating the parts that I needed to fix this thing. And thanks for watching and more to come later.